Welcome back. Uh, so right now you are still on daybreak uh, and uh, we want to actually head into our interview segment. Uh, we have uh, online uh, to look at a topic that uh, is bordering on everybody. It's the 63rd uh, anniversary of Nigeria that is independent of Nigeria and we're looking at both the political and economic challenges. We have Adiriti Manuel, an entrepreneur online to discuss this. Hello Adiriti. Yeah, good day. Yes. Um, Adiriti, first of all, happy independence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, ah, Nigeria is 63, though. He said, ah, happy independence. But the truth about the matter is that uh, both politically and economically, we seems to not have gotten it right at all. Mm -hmm. And you know, both politics, politics affect economy and economy affects politics. So from your own angle, as an entrepreneur who is presently facing the harsh realities in Nigeria presently. Um, what is your thoughts on it, the independence so far? Uh, well, um, it, it is it's the fact that um, we've, um, we've been independent and um, it's um, uh, it declared independence anniversary. Mm. Okay, but um, in my opinion, we we got our uh, independence from our uh, colonial masters. Yes. Okay, and then um, we have remained as a nation. We have remained slaves, you know, to the political class, and that's sad. Well, um, yes, uh, it's sad that we have remained backward, but. Um, can you in any way point out to any form of development, you know, have we in any way uh, moved, you know, away from the norms we used to see in politics, you know, for that, before we head into our economy now? So have we in any way improved on our political behavior so far from that time, from 1960 uh, to date? Well, um, the, the fact of the matter remains that... Um, we are still a young democracy, okay, and um, the, the longer we continue to practice democracy, the better we will become at it. Mm. You know, so um, the, the um, political maneuvers of today are somewhat um, better than what it used to be. You know, it's just that um, we still have a, a political system that empowers the political office holder above the office they occupy. Uh, uh, but um, looking at it critically now, uh, because you said, um, you know, uh, we just have a system that continues to encourage the political office holder above the those who are not in that political office you know and uh, like everybody knows that government is actually no 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 that, that, that's not what i was saying okay. what i'm saying is that we have a system okay that celebrates the office holder as yes. opposed to the office yes okay so yeah, you know that... you have a situation where you have um, a governor, you have a local government chairman, you know, feeling is not accountable to anybody, you know, because he sees himself as a demigod of some stuff. That, that, means, so, that, that means that the structures are not are so weak. We have very weak structures. Very yes, uh, because, because in some other claims, uh, because we always use examples from developed countries we are a developing country as you find out that some of these developed countries no matter the president or whoever leader the prime minister or minister that comes in works according to the dictates of um, the structures on ground that is what it is already already on ground so how can we actually move to that level you know of uh, sustaining a particular political you know culture and also moving to the level of attaining the best practices politically well it has to be it, it has to be a deliberate effort okay by both the leadership and the citizenry 
Okay, the leaders have to understand that um, first and foremost, their principal job is to serve. Okay, service not to themselves, but service to the citizens that have elected them into power. Okay, and then the citizens have to get to a point where they realize that it is their responsibility <laughs> to hold elected officers, you know, responsible for their actions in office. You know, so we cannot continue to remain docile and ex expect that things will change. You know, the citizens need to follow up on them. Um, you know, the people they've elected in the Senate, those, you know, they've elected as councillors, you know, there has to be accountability at every level. And it is it, it has to be demanded. Because if you do not demand for it, you will not get it. It has to be demanded. Mm -hmm. Now, um, okay. uh, we're just, uh, we're in this same period, we are also going, we are having uh, the NSC issue, the NLC issue, you know, strike, sit at home and all that. You know, with all that and with what is happening to the economy presently, which you will agree, uh, dollar, uh, nearer to the dollar right now is a, a thousand plus. And, uh, you know, uh, the fuel, uh, petrol, that's the uh, PMS itself is 700 naira and above. And uh, diesel itself, it's not even affordable. Then gas. Cooking gas has also gone up <laughs> terribly well. You know, sir, oh, oh, so almost everything has gone up to the, the uh, exchange rate itself. You are an entrepreneur. You know how much you guys go to the bank uh, to uh, uh, make exchange rates. Uh, now that the government says there's a parallel market, but then we still have the Buru de change out there. Who are still selling at a particular rate and the banks are also selling at a particular rate. So with all these things that is happening, um, where is Nigeria at the moment? Or with this new administration, are we looking to see any form of change? Or are we uh, likely to just still be in this same position for a while? Well, um, I, said, I said on TV some time ago, I do not know if it is on this particular platform where another TV station, you know, but I said that they might not envy, you know, the um, incoming president then, okay, now is the president, in the person of Tinobu, okay, because um, the industry called Nigeria is a tough nut to crack, hmm. you know, and um, there's a lot that has gone wrong over time. You know, and it will take a lot to clean up the mess and then, you know, begin the, the work of restructuring and rebuilding. You know, because uh, there's decay in nearly every aspect of the, of the Nigerian um, economy. Nearly every aspect. Now, uh, now you, you just mentioned, yes, it's difficult, uh, but you know, when uh, political officer, office holders, uh, want to come in, the promises they make, uh, you know, the manifestos they read out, all points that, oh, we are going to succeed in just less uh, a few years, uh, just in a few time we'll succeed. But yet uh, we have been passing through that same thing like uh, uh, almost every administration comes, makes their promises and then they come in and then they fail, they just fail woefully and Nigeria seems to accept the same set of almost the same set of people the same time and the same thing plays out again so where is the challenges is the challenges with the people or the challenges with the way um, they have been impoverished to the end to the uh, level that okay they can just accept anything just for them to go on well um, i was on, I was on a program in the okay and i said to them change in Nigeria and uh, the citizenry need to stop being suicide. Okay, mm. and um, the Nigerians have a history of um, finance smiling. Mm. You so know, finance 63 smiling. Years, yes, 63 years of independence, there is very, very little to show for it. Very, very, very little to show for it. 
you know, and uh, the council will begin to place demand on leadership. Things will not change until we begin to place demand on leadership. Things will not change, and then as I said time and time again that the biggest problem we have in Nigeria is a leadership problem. Okay, and that is because Nigeria is being is being run like a public enterprise. Now we need we need what? to get to the point where where you know begin to run the country like you know like a personal industry. What do I mean? Imagine imagine that um, Nigeria is the business of an uh, maker and co. Okay, and a maker and co, you know, borrows a hundred million naira to buy goods, hmm. you know, for sale and all that. Now, a maker and co are aware that they have collected these goods, you know, they've collected a loan, they have to pay interest on it, you know, so they have to do everything possible, you know, to ensure that not only does the business thrive, but it, it is also able to pay back the loan you know, plus the interest. But we currently have a situation where, you know, Nigeria is being treated like um, a national cake. You know, everybody just comes to have a bite of it without really, you know, making it better, without really growing it. You know, and that is a major problem. You know, because uh, otherwise you will not have a system where, you know, you have ministries churning out budgets, these budgets are approved, monies are released. And nobody follows up to ensure that, you know, these monies are used for the exact things they said they were going to be used for, and that the same quality, you know, that is brought in by contractors is just gotten. You know, so until we begin to, we, we begin to treat um, um, governance as, um, as a business that has to yield dividends, it will not grow. It will continue to remain the same. Now we have we have a situation where about ninety percent of our revenue is being used to service debt. Mm. If that was a personal business, that would never ever happen. You know, that would never ever happen because you have to make room, you know, for expansion, you have to make room for growth, you have to make it for a lot of debt. So there's no way that you collect so much debt that you're using ninety seven percent. 90% you know, of your revenue to study the debt and still collect more. It makes no sense. It is ridiculous. You know, and the reason we continue like that is because everybody is looking at short term gains, short term results. Nobody is thinking mid term, nobody is thinking long term. And for as long as that persists, we just continue to. You know, accumulate trouble for uh, the future leaders, and um, th that's just what it is. Mm. So, um, it, it, what you just said right now is that um, you know everything should just be looked at, uh, you know, critically, and then maybe we can now move forward uh, doing it rightly. But again, uh, um, do you identify that uh, because Nigeria is a multi ethnic uh, society? Do you think um, that is one of the challenges that we are having, or that our constitution, or rather our bylaw, you know, is uh, one of the challenges that we are having? Um, well, we we have um, a very good constitution. <laughs> okay. Um, having said that, there are lots of loopholes that um, the political class exploit from time to time mm. okay then there's also the question of whether whether the constitution as it were is fair you know to all or not you know and um, i've always said i've always i've always said i've always been an advocate of um restructuring okay i've also i've always been an advocate of people spending or people earning according to what they generate. You know, you cannot you cannot have you cannot have a state, okay, making them um, contributing fifty percent to the nation's 
internally generated revenue. And then that 50 percent, 10 percent goes to the federal government. Another 10 remains with the state government. And you're sharing that to other people. It does not make sense. It encourages laziness. You know, so we need a system where people are able to, you know, benefit from their resources, benefit from their hard work. So you have a governor coming into place, uh, into office, and this governor knows that if he's able to to improve the economy, you know, by tough and tough margin, he would first and foremost reap the benefit, you know, more than every other. Then it becomes a competition, you know, as Lagos and Kano competing. You know, because Lagos, Kano is not envious of Lagos generating so much and having to keep so much. So everybody begins to look inward and begins to work, you know, on unnecessary the abundance of resources that they actually have. Because trust me, all across the nation, there's an abundance of not only human, but also of natural resources, mineral resources, all across the nation. Abundant resources, uh, uh, human resources, and even uh, capital, uh, capital resources, we have a lot of it. Um, now, ministers have been selected, appointments have been made, even appointments are continuing to be made, uh, and all those things have been sorted out. Uh, do you think that the administration needs more time, you know, to actually stamp its feet on uh, 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 moving the country forward, both politically and economically? Well, um, I, I think that it took them it took them long enough. One would have expected that, um, in the case of the president, who has said repeatedly that his lifetime ambition, you know, has been to become president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, one would have expected, you know, a greater level of preparedness, you know, and then. Um, but yeah, it's taking them long enough. We can, we can only hope that um, the ministers that have been you know, um, approved by the Senate, you know, that they hit the ground running and that um, God has them to fulfill their mandates. The next. Well, thank you so much, uh, Adirati Manuel, uh, for your time. Uh, and that's a very good uh, one from you. And I want to continue to wish you a very happy independence. Even though uh, Nigeria is at this point now, things are actually not in the right frame at the moment uh, economically and do not the same way uh, politically. But we pray that uh, the administration moves the country forward positively and uh, incorporating every other person into the space called Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And well, with that, we'll go for a very short break and we'll be right back for more.